that little book tube. I almost forgot the mail. Can't have that. First mail haul of the week. We have a few packages here. I, I uh, forgot the mail completely when I opened the other packages, but we still have some. We have four little envelopes. We'll see. We'll see what we have here. If there's anything squeal worthy, this is first one. Okay. All right. This is another copy of Patrick Coleman's debut novel, The Churchgoer. A bit of contemporary L.A. noir. Uh, I have uh, another copy of this, and have I have not got to it yet. And this is this is coming right up. Yeah, this is July 30th, so I need to get to this right away. Uh, but I haven't got to it yet, <laughs> so it's, I'm very happy. I'm of course happy for the author, and I'm also happy that it's a you know a $17 paperback instead of a $35 hardcover. Which are you more likely to take a gamble on? It's a debut author. It is by definition a gamble. If the book is you know two copies, then you're more likely to gamble on it than, uh, than if it's not. Uh, let's see. Okay, <laughs> alright. Uh, all right. I did not request this. This is coming out in October. And it's a novel of some kind. <laughs> this is uh, from Third Man Books. I don't know if I've ever got anything from that. Uh, this is by Benjamin Myers, and it is called The Gallows Pole. I think this is going to be another original trade paperback. Yes. Sebastian Barry calls it phenomenal. Uh, from an England divided, from his moorland home, David Hartley assembles a gang of weavers and land workers to embark upon a criminal enterprise that will capsize the economy and become the biggest fraud in British history. They are the Crag Vale coiners, and their business is clipping. The forging of coins, the treasonous offense punishable by death. Forensically assembled from historical records and legal documents, the Gallows Pole is a true story of resistance and a rarely told alternate history of the North. Okay. Okay, so this is nonfiction. This is about a, a, a group of uh, coin clippers. And the author is an award-winning author, poet, journalist, who's been translating to several languages, and he currently lives in Upper Calder Valley, West Yorkshire. Okay. Uh, so it's a... Okay. So it's a novel about the north of England. <laughs> All right. So it doesn't come out for a long time, though, so I don't have to worry about it. I should keep this little folder. The Third Man Press sent me a little folder of other stuff. Maybe I want some more of their stuff. Uh, but this is, I think, going to be, uh, did, we, did we say, did we find out, is this going to be another paperback original? Uh, no, yes, no, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been auctioned for a movie. Book of the Year in several UK national print publications, none of which have published me. Um... Okay, I don't, I don't see details, so I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. It has the look of something that's going to be a paperback original, uh, but I don't know. I won't know until later on, so uh, let's hold on to the folder and put it somewhere separate. Uh, all right, so we're, uh, we're, doing, no, we're doing fine. Fiction and nonfiction. Uh, let's see what's next for me. Oh, we're back to nonfiction. <laughs> uh, this is by Bob Batchelor, and it is The Bourbon King. The Life and Crimes of George Remus, Prohibition's Evil Genius. <laughs> oh my. When most of us think of the 1920s and Prohibition, we think of Al Capone and his multi-million dollar Chicago bootlegging operation. But there was a bigger player on the scene, a man many believe accumulated more wealth than the notorious gangster, and with a sophistication that Scarface certainly never achieved. And he did it all from a smaller market, Cincinnati. But as the author explains in this book, uh... Uh, the former pharmacist and criminal defense attorney, nicknamed the Napoleon of the Bar, uh, wanted to build an empire on hooch because he had a relentless addiction to success, and Imogene, a gorgeous young second wife with expensive tastes, to keep happy. Huh. As an attorney, Remus took on bootleggers as clients. When he realized they had pockets full of cash and paid their large fines with $100 bills, he had an epiphany. If those low-level fools could make that kind of money, someone like him could make millions. And he was right. <laughs> okay. All right, so who is the author? Bob Batchel is a critically acclaimed cultural historian and biographer. And he teaches media, journalism, and film at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. Okay, fantastic. Uh, okay, so a crime, a crime tell-all 
Once again, the pop sheet itself is very scanty on details. I don't know why that is. Uh, but the book itself should tell me uh, when this comes out. It's what I'd like to know. September. Okay, this comes out in September. Uh, <laughs> a prohibition criminal. All right. Uh, and then the last one. Then we'll do the last one. This will be the first mail hall of the week. Uh, the bean is at her window again. The the, the uh, temperature here in Boston has... Let's see, there she is. <laughs> the temperature here in Boston did indeed decrease enormously. <laughs> Wonderful. The humidity is still sky high, but the temperature has gone way down. It's no longer approaching 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, the, the reason that the bean is paying attention to the outside world is because... The whole world outside, the air, the underside of the leaves, everything uh, feels like rain. Lots of rain. It feels like a massive rainstorm is coming. Uh, so we shall see. I, 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 uh, I would love that. If there's a massive rainstorm, then that is what will kill the humidity. And then we'll have normal temperatures again, where it reaches 80, 82, 83 degrees Fahrenheit during the height of the day, and then cools off at night. Uh Oh, okay. I think we saw this already. I think we saw the advanced copy. This is from the folks at Yale. This comes out in late August. And it is by Egbert Giles Lee and Christian Ziegler. And it's called Nature Strange and Beautiful. How Living Beings Evolved and Made Earth a Home. And there is a hummingbird on the cover. Dodgy light, but uh, it's pretty. Uh, in the wide-ranging and beautifully illustrated pages of this book, uh, author Egbert Lee explores the results of billions of years of evolution at work. The author, who spent five decades on Panama's Barrow, Colorado Island, reflecting on the organization of various amazingly diverse tropical ecosystems, now shows how selection on selfish genes, quote-unquote, gives rise to complex modes of cooperation and interdependence. With the help of such artists as the celebrated nature photographer Christian Ziegler, Natural History Illustrator Deborah Miriam Kaspari and Damon Kilo, Lee explains basic concepts of evolutionary biology ranging from life's single-celled beginnings to the complex societies humans have formed today. Okay, so the, the, uh, the shared author photo, uh, the shared author credit is because of the photographer. That's kind of interesting. Uh, oh, okay, the photography is beautiful. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There's one of my own. There's a bat <laughs> biting into a fruit. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, and yet more bats. Okay. <laughs> I've, been, I've been to the exact place where this guy spent all those decades, and it is lousy with bats. Just lousy with them. They're everywhere. Uh, lots of other stuff, too. It's kind of creepy to tramp through. Uh, oh, boy. This looks great. When is this again? This is late August. All right. This is a certain review. <laughs> okay. Great. Fantastic. So we end with a fantastic nature book. Wonderful. All right, so we have Nature Strange and Beautiful, uh, a well-illustrated primer on uh, evolutionary biology and the wonders it can create. Then we have uh, The Bourbon King about George Remus, the Napoleon of the Bar. Then The Gallows Pole by Benjamin Myers. I'm gathered that this has been out in the UK already. Uh, any of you read it, maybe, by any chance? Uh, and another copy of The Churchgoer, which is Patrick Coleman's debut novel in a nice eye-catching trade paperback. So that was our that's our first mail of the week and a little glimpse of the bean for you. <laughs> uh, but there'll be more. There'll be lots more. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up, but I'll be back. Thank you, book two.